Hey everyone, it has been a couple of weeks since I did my last video on this channel. My apologies, but I've been doing a lot of content over at Geek Culture. If you haven't been uh, subscribing to that channel, please do so. I did a Nikon Z9 review, which I got completely soaking wet for. It was very cool to do that though. Also, the Tamron 35150 f2.2.8 for the Sony E-mount, the 2875 f2.8 G2 lens, movie reviews, a lot of other great stuff out there. So do check out that channel when you get a chance. But of course, you're here because of the title of this video, the all-new Light Lens Lab 50 millimeter f2 the homage to the 50 elcon a lens that is extremely rare in the secondhand market only about 550 were made between 1972 to 1974 majority of them around 400 plus were for the u.s military the rest were for public consumption they were compared with the ke7a uh, like a camera so it's not a lens that you see out there as a matter of fact i've never seen one here in singapore in the secondhand market thus far and i've been in you know, the camera industry for a number of years, you know, collecting and reviewing lenses and cameras. So it's interesting that Light Lens Lab decided to take this lens on because at its first look, when you look at an image of it, it's very unlike a like in its design. It looks, I mean, it's designed to be functional. It's designed, you know, when the Elcon was made for, you know, extreme conditions, high temperatures, it, everything is made to be functional first and foremost. Design is secondary. But with that, comes a very unique lens that I think Light Lens Lab once again has knocked it out of the park. Now, I'm not paid or sponsored for this video in any way, shape, or form. I don't own this lens. It goes right back to Rice Ball Photography, who's been kind enough to loan me this lens for the review because they are the distributors here in Singapore. But these are my thoughts and my thoughts only. So what we're gonna do in this video is, because I know a lot of you cannot watch the entire video based on time or whatever the case may be, there will be chapter markers throughout this so you can skip ahead to what portion you wanna you know, watch or find more information on but i will give you a concise review right now just in case for those who don't have the time to watch the rest of my video but i hope you guys do i hope you do because i try to put as much time and effort to making these videos as informative as possible here's my overall thoughts in the lens this is a lens that equals and sometimes exceeds the build quality of older and new leica lenses yes it is that well made it is beautiful pictures don't do it justice it is a lens that needs to be seen. It is a very compact 50 millimeter lens, only slightly taller than the 35 f2.8 element from Light Lens Lab. It is uh, optically, it's right up there with the rigid Summicron. I would say at f2, it might be slightly less sharp, but when you stop down to f2.8, f4, 5.6, it matches out beautifully. It has a more of a classic rendering than some of the newer Summicrons out there, and you're gonna see that in the Boca. It handles flare relatively well. It uh, Chromatic aberration is there, but only in extreme conditions. But once you do stop down, you do see a lot of that is alleviated. But only when you're really shooting in bright light do you notice it. But as a lens performance itself, it is fantastic. The only thing that throws me is the aperture ring turns the opposite way than every other Leica lens out there. Now, I don't know if this was a design element of the Elcon. If you do know this, let me know in the comment section below. But it does make using the lens a little bit cumbersome in the beginning. It's something I would need to spend more time with, but unfortunately, I don't have that access of time with this lens because it has to go back for others to test and check out. But I would say that if you are looking for a 50 millimeter lens, of course, and you don't have a Summicron out there and you're looking for something around that range, that F2 range, and you wanna shoot something with film or want something that just has some character to this, you need to look at this lens. I said in my previous 35 millimeter uh, F2 8 element review for Light Lens Lab that this was the best made third party lens on the market that I've used thus far. This 50 millimeter F2 Elcon homage supersedes that lens. It is so well made. It is a functional jewel. The people over at Light Lens Lab, I would love to chat with them sometime because whatever they're doing, they're doing it right. This is a stunning lens to use, to hold, and the image quality out of this even resolves 100 megapixel medium format sensors very well. That's impressive. So that's my concise review. Now we're gonna go into build quality. We'll go into Lightroom. We'll take a look at images, usage, all that stuff. And then I'll give you my final thoughts. So let's go first and foremost into design and build. The moment that you take it out of its package and the same packaging that you got for the 35 F2 8 element is the same packaging you're getting for this. That beautiful case. I don't know if it's leather or faux leather, but it feels premium. Everything's padded in it's very nicely. The, the caps in the front and the back are all metal. It is just so well put together. It is just, I mean, Light Lens Lab is really 
paying an homage to Leica with their designs. They're not necessarily, I wouldn't say they're copying, they're paying an homage to it. They're trying to replicate that build quality, that experience of taking the lens out and using it and feeling it. That's what they're doing with this. But when you pick up this lens, you're gonna notice how well it's made the machining, the metal, the refinement on this. Nothing feels inexpensive. The focus uh, tab on it, as I mentioned, it's large. It's the largest focus tab I've used on any lens today, but I guess being that it was designed for the military, people are gonna be using gloves, so they need that excess size to be able to focus and you know the turn, the focus ring and so forth, and the aperture ring. It is machined beautifully. As a matter of fact, I put it next to my 50 rigid Summicron and it's better build quality than that, in my personal opinion. Some may disagree, but I use a lot of third-party lenses out there. I've never come across a lens that's built like this, outside of Leica, just haven't. Weight-wise, comes around 200 to 236 grams thereabouts. That's what Light Lens Lab is touting, depending on the, the metal that they're using, but it is a brass lens, so you are going to feel that heft as soon as you take it out of the, uh, the pouch. It is, uh, but it's compact. It's much smaller than I think you would think it would be being a 50 millimeter. It's only slightly taller than the 35 F2 8 element from Light Lens Lab or the 35 F2 Summicron 8 element for that matter. So it is a very compact nifty 50 lens if you would call it that. In terms of the markings on it, white and red, they're very bold, very easy to read, which is nice. Um, even on the aperture, even on the uh, focus uh, ring, you're gonna see all those with no issues at all. So that's a nice thing too. And again, this is designed for functionality based on the Elcon, so that's what's gonna come into that design language as well. But the most polarizing thing about this lens is the aperture ring because it turns opposite. Now it has a large, um, I would say tab to it, but it turns opposite. So when you're using the lens, it's a little bit cumbersome to use in that regard. But everything feels good. The click of the aperture feels fantastic. The focus ring is smooth. I mean, this lens, it just oozes build quality, design, class, luxury. Even though it's designed for functionality first and foremost, it has all of those elements inside of it. Now, I have the black paint here with me for the review. I've also tested the chrome version. The chrome looks beautiful, by the way. I put it onto the uh, Lumix S1R. I was testing it out at Rice Ball Photography uh, when they first got it in. So, But I took home with me the, uh, the black one for review here at my home studio so I could film it with my MP because you got to have it on the black MP. Look at that. Look how sexy that looks. Now, in terms of the black paint, it's not a super glossy and it's not super matte. It's kind of a semi-matte paint finish. It does match very well with the MP black paint because it has sort of a, somewhat of a gloss to it. And even let's say you're using an M, uh, like an M10R, you're going to notice it matches well with that. Even let's say an M10 or an M10P or M10D for that matter, it will match relatively well with that. But I love that it's using red and white markings. And also, another uh, another change to this versus the 8 element, instead of that little purple jewel at the uh, near the mounting area, they've now got the red dot. So they have really gone full on with the red dot, which I appreciate. As a matter of fact, I was asking Rice Ball, can we order a red dot and put it onto the eight element if we wanted to? But I don't think so. I think they're gonna try to differentiate the lenses as much as possible. Now, in terms of the packaging, there is no lens hood that comes with this, but the element is, the front element is recessed a little bit from the front of the lens, but you can also use the same lens hood that Light Lens Lab makes for the 35 F2 eight element or the original Leica lens hood for that matter. So I-R-O-O-A-R-I-R-O-A, I don't even know how to say it, but I just call it the Leica lens hood. But you can use that same one, 39 millimeter filter diameter on this, so no issues at all with that. Inside the lens, you have four elements, four groups, very simplistic design, a 10 rounded diaphragm blades to it, which are stunningly beautifully made. You can see it on the back of this lens. I'll show it to you right now. It looks beautiful. Matches uh, design-wise to the, um, the 50 rigid that I have here as well. I mean, this lens is so impeccably made. That's what I keep, I'm in awe about, of how well they made this lens. But that's essentially the design and the build of this lens. It looks fantastic. It's a lens you need to see in person. Pictures do not do it justice. And uh, I think you're gonna really enjoy using it and getting it in your hands because that focus tab is phenomenal. It feels so good. Just that aperture ring is a little bit odd. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into Lightroom. I'm gonna show you more close-up images of taken with this lens. Again, I use the Lumix S1R, the GFX 100S, and the Canon R5 for this testing. I have not been able to try it out on this uh, film camera here because I didn't have time to develop film and to scan it for you guys for this review, but I maybe will try to do that in the future if I can get this lens back. But anyway, well, let's take a look at some images right now and I'll come back with my final thoughts. 
Okay, we are now in Lightroom taking a look at images from this 50 millimeter Light Lens Lab F2 Elk on homage. The cameras that I use for pr predominantly most of this test are the GFX100S and the Canon R5. Now I'm gonna show you a comparison between this and the 50 rigid from Leica. So this is the Light Lens Lab at F2. And I mean, this is sharp. I mean, for all intents and purposes, when you look at this image, and I'm really zoomed in, this is sharp at F2. Here's at F2.8. You can see it's much sharper there. And at F4, it's razor sharp. This is impressive. Look at the beard here, here, the eyes, the texture around my skin. Uh, yeah, very impressive on the GFX 100S, mind you. Of course, this is at the 35 millimeter crop, but still very impressive. Now, let me show you what it looks like on the rigid at F2. Quite impressive. You can see the beard here, here is a little bit more pronounced. The eyes are a little bit more pronounced right here. This is very sharp for F2. So I would give the edge to the Leica at F2 over the Light Lens Lab, but ever so slight. F2.8, gonna give the edge a little bit to the Leica once more, but we're really creeping up. The Light Lens Lab is catching up, and in F4, I mean, they're pretty much neck and neck. I, I mean, I'm really splitting hairs, pun intended, by looking at my beard to see if there's a difference on this. <laughs> it's, uh, it's tough to say, but it's impressive that a lens that's, what, 40, 50 years old can actually resolve this this well i mean that's very very impressive now let's look at other images here from the light lens lab and let's take a look at flaring for a moment here and you will get some flaring when you do have some direct sunlight coming into the lens and it's pretty well controlled for the most part i mean i've seen worse uh the eight element is much worse in this regard so i would say the 50 is better but if you just want to uh cover it with your hand it's all gone and of course i did do a little edit on that so this is before edit and then after edit. So that gives you an idea of what it will look like in with, you know, the lens hood that you can use, as I mentioned in this review, the one that goes on the, the light lens lab, you can use that same lens hood for this uh, lens as well. Okay, let's uh, show you a little bit of that uh, purple fringing I talked about, a little bit of that chromatic aberration that comes into play. And it only comes in once in a while, not all the time. And I'll show you what I mean by that. Case in point, shooting against uh, direct light right here, you're gonna see that purple fringing around these buildings here. This is correctable in Lightroom. It's not that big of a deal. Again, this is a classic rendering lens. It's not meant to be optically perfect like we're getting from a lot of the newer lenses on the market. This is replicating a lens from the 1970s in terms of it's the way it resolves. So, I mean, this doesn't really bother me that much. But then I took this image of this statue and against backlight and it's really well controlled. I mean, maybe a little bit of green right here, but I mean, I'll tell you, I'm not seeing that purple fringing that I saw over there. So again, it really depends on how the light's hitting this lens is you're gonna see that or not. But it's very impressive for what Light Lens Lab have done with it. It is very, very impressive. Now I wanna talk about the bokeh a little bit because the bokeh on this lens is very unique. It has a very nice uh, rendering to it. Case in point, take a look at these uh, flowers I took a photo of here. And I mean, I love the, it's got a little bit of an ovalish. It's not completely circular. It's a bit, some people might call this busy, but I love the artistic effect that it gives to it. And this is just really nice. And even an F2, so look at the detail that you're getting here on these flower petals here. Beautiful. I mean, this is more than acceptable for me. This was shot on the Canon R5, mind you. Um, I'm very, very happy with that. And I'll show you this other shot here I took. And this is with lights to kind of give you an idea of the bokeh in that regard. Look how the lights, how the, the halos around this. Now, some people will call this imperfect, whatever the case may be. I think it looks awesome. Because when you would post a photo like this up on your social media or on the website, people are gonna go, wow, that is really unique. But look at the detail this here. It's very sharp, very sharp. Again, this is shot at F2 on the R5. So, fantastic lens, a 45 megapixel sensor, and it's resolving very well in that regard. Here's another shot I took at the statue just to kind of show you the bokeh in the background as well. I just love the character that this lens provides. I mean, that to me is, that's why I like to invest in classic lenses because some of the newer lenses, this would all be smooth and it'd be creamy in the background. But this adds this three-dimensional pop that you're getting it from, from the bokeh to the, uh, to the subject and focus. It just really comes alive. And then if you want to look at sun stars, I don't think this lens is made for sun stars, but you know, if you are into that, that's what it looks like. Now let's go to my final thoughts 
on this lens. So as you could tell by the images in Lightroom, I mean, this performs really well. This is a really nice performing lens. Again, it has more of a classic rendering. So if you're looking for that modern rendering Summicron or modern rendering lens for your mirrorless camera system or whatever it may be, this might not be the lens for you, even though it is more modern rendering than the 35 F2.8 element from Light Lens Lab. This one, I mean, it ha it, 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 this definitely can perform as you saw on various different cameras, but again, at F2, it's not as sharp. And even Light Lens Lab has this in their pamphlet inside the lens that at F2, it's okay, but at F5.6, that's where you really see it come to play. And you can even see some of the sample images at F4, and even stop down, it is really sharp and it resolves 100S sensor, no issues at all, which was impressive because the eight element didn't do that. So this, this supersedes that lens in resolving power. But, would I recommend this lens? And that's interesting because if you already have a 50 Summicron out there, if you're a collector of 50s, you're gonna to wanna to pick up this lens. But if you're one of these kind of buyers, it's like, look, I have a 50 millimeter lens already. Do I wanna pick this up? Do I need to pick this up? That is a very interesting question. Like case in point for myself, I have a 50 rigid. It's beautiful. I love it. Would I get this lens if I have that? Aesthetically, Yes, if I had the means, I would pick this up as an extra lens because I like the black look, I like the compactness of it, I like the unique design of it. But in terms of just image quality, they're relatively very similar in that regard. I would even say the Summicron has, this, as you saw right there, a slight edge at F2 versus this uh, Elgon Homage. But I gotta tell you, this lens, just you feeling it and looking at it and touching it, it's just so beautifully made. I mean, it's just such a, it's a really a special lens. This is a very, very special lens. And I, once again, I gotta give it, uh, kudos to Light Lens Lab for what they're doing with these lenses. I mean, you know, the 35 was their first lens that I know of at least. This 50 is also a home run. I know they have other lenses coming out down the road, but this is a lens you definitely need to try. And if you are a collector of 50s out there and you've never been able to get your hands on an Elcon, well, this is your next best bet right here. It is very, I, I just like it. I really like it. I mean, the, logically, I don't need to buy this lens because I have a 50 Summicron Rigid, which performs very similar. But take logic out the window because logic goes out the window when we're talking about Leica a lot of the times. This lens may be something I need to put in my cabinet up there. Just saying. Anyway, those are my thoughts on the Light Lens Lab 50 millimeter F2 Elcon Homage. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. Is this a lens you're looking to pick up? Any questions you have, I will try to answer them for you. With that, guys, take care, stay safe. Thanks for watching this video, and I'll see you very soon.